Good morning. It's good to see you. Now my mic's working. Let me just start again. Good morning. Hey, y'all can be seated for just a second. Uh, it's good to see you this morning. Uh, just really excited to be here. Good crowd. We're glad to see you guys. Thank our, let's thank our music team before I forget this morning. Good job. As always, they show up early and they get out here and practice so that we can uh, just lead you in worship and provide us a place for worship. So I'm excited about that. Uh, starting a new sermon series today. And, um, and so we're going um, we're gonna to talk this. Uh, it's a little different. I'll explain it here in just a little while, but um, excited about that. Got a few things going on here. Um, this, uh, this Wednesday, we'll be back here at the church. We've got a meal at 6. We've got our uh, Bible study for children and adults at 645. And, um, and so uh, remember all that. Also, by this weekend, or by this Wednesday, we need your supplies for Haiti, okay? We got our Haiti Christmas shoe boxes, and uh, we've got a few things in your bulletin that we still need for those things. Some of you have given money for shipping, for our postage for the Haiti boxes. We really appreciate that. And what I want to do, we've been talking about maybe getting our junior high group together. We've got a pretty good group of junior high kids. And so next Sunday evening, I'll, I'll get with you moms. Uh, we'll send a text message. We'll send out a, put something on our social media. We need to get the, our junior high group. We'll get you some pizza. We'll bribe you with pizza. How's that? And we need to get, pack some shoe boxes. And so we'll get some commitments from that, and we'll get those shoe boxes packed. I think that'll be a great, uh, great mission for these uh, ministry for these kids to do for us. I got a couple of girls that want to read for us this morning. All right, so come on up. While they're coming up, also want to tell you that um, our fall festival's coming up on Sunday the 27th, and um, we've got a lot going on there. Got a big inflatable uh, rented. We're going to do some food. Uh, we got our trunk or treat, okay? And so trunk or treat, oh, I might have had that just a little tall, you think? Huh? How about that? Um, trunk or treat, so if you have a trunk, then you want to... Uh, Get your vehicle out here, decorate that. We're going to provide a safe place for kids to go trick-or-treating on Sunday the 27th from 3 to 5 p.m. We'll be telling you a lot more about that all month for sure. All right, got a couple of girls here. Alfie, you want to go first? All right, let's, let's put you about right here. How's that? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John three sixteen. Good job, everybody. Yep. All right. Good job. Now let's let Miss Ellery up here. Is that about right? Yeah. Okay. Um, Psalm 23, verse 4. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. You are with me. Your shepherd's rod and staff comfort me. All right. Thank you, Ellery. And <clears throat> I had her read that verse because that leads into our sermon today. Even though we've walked through valleys of darkness here on earth, we're not going to fear evil around us. We're going to talk about that today. Let's pray. Father, it's a good day. We thank you for all you give us. You give us a lot. You give us more than we deserve, for sure. We're blessed, and we, uh, God, we're just uh, so proud to be able to be here. Thank you for the health, the strength that you've given us to be here, the safety that you've given us to be here, and we pray, God, for those who cannot be with us today. I pray that you will uh, guide us and bless us this morning as we worship you. Allow us to bow down and humbly before you, and, uh, and, and God, just to, uh, just to, to, to break us and to allow us to know that you're our God and that we're serving you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Didn't know I was standing behind you, did you? I had no idea you were standing. <laughs> that scared me, okay. <clears throat> um, I, I had my microphone on, so you would have known it, but I'm just going to tell you, that could have been dangerous right there. Yeah. Well, could I get all the elders and deacons to come up for a moment, please? All of our elders and deacons, come up here in front of the stage right here for me, if you would. Miss Robin, I'll need you to come up here at this time. Mr. Peter and Bonnie, as uh, we want to give them a big thanks of appreciation here, they put together a goodie basket for Mitch and Robin. As all of you know, today is Pastor Appreciation Week, all right? And it's not oftentimes uh, that you have a pastor in a church 
with a long tenure, okay? We pride ourselves here for keeping our pastors for long periods of time. Brother Pat and Carolyn was here for well over 20 years. I believe uh, Mitch and Robin is working on number 18. Is that correct? I think so. And uh, we praise God and thank God for them. And uh, you don't always realize what your pastors have to deal with, okay? But they can tell you. It's, it's quite a lot. And uh, for us, the things that we asked of them, and they answered the call. And they've answered God's call 18 years ago when, when they came uh, to be our, uh, our ministers here. And I always say this because it's true. Behind every great man is a greater woman. Okay? I believe it. Uh, this is uh, uh, one of those professions where it's teamwork. Uh, you can't have a successful pastor and you're, he's got a supportive wife standing behind him. And we definitely have that. And uh, I want all of y'all to give them a big round of applause this morning. <laughs> Uh, amen. Well, I, hey, there we go. Well, brothers and sisters, you're well appreciated. And don't ever, ever think that you're not. Uh, the church also, they had a week of off last, last week. Uh, the first Sunday they'd been gone for a year. Is that about right? Long time. It was well-deserved. And, uh, and we've got to do more to make that happen more often. But the church got you all a little something here that might make your next trip a little easier. We appreciate you. Appreciate you very much. All right. Let's get back to worshiping the Lord Jesus. How about it? Well, first of all, I do want to say thank you, Terry, and to our elders and deacons. Also, and I should have said this earlier, I really appreciate Jeffrey for coming up last week. And uh, and I'm sure it's heavy. Huh? And that's a load right there. I'm telling you, I'm standing here thinking, I need to set this down. Uh, yeah, we, we really appreciate Jeffrey for stepping in and preaching. And I heard a lot of good compliments uh, this week on, uh, on him and, and his willingness to come up and, and speak. And so we uh, just really appreciated that. It had been a while since we'd been away, but um, I know the Lord has a plan. Somebody's gonna, he's gonna put somebody here that can uh, go to work here with us and, um, and get us back um, to, to being able to, to leave a little more often. But thanks, Jeffrey. Yep. Will y'all be standing once again as we complete our worship today?
morning. I, uh, last week, you know, uh, a lot of you may or may not know, but my wife decided to go to Florida <laughs> right in the middle of a hurricane. And we do appreciate all of the calls and texts and prayers, most especially, that she received on her behalf. It's kind of humbling that so many people cared and thought about her that way. But that big storm made me think, you know, we've been to Florida a bunch of times. We've got a little place down there, and we love to go. But uh, you always just go to Florida thinking the weather's going to be perfect. It usually is. It's either not cold or sometimes a little hot, but it's always nice. And this time it wasn't. So we go through life a lot of times, everybody says, why do we have bad things happen? And why does this always have to happen? You know, I'm sure that's what people in Florida were saying. It's like once every couple of weeks, they've got two in a row. Why is this happening to me? You know, if we never had anything bad happen to us, would we appreciate the good? Um, it goes on old and old saying, everybody's said that for years, but. If you didn't have the sunshine, you wouldn't appreciate the rain. If you didn't have the rain, you wouldn't appreciate the sunshine. Same goes with our Savior that died for us. Uh, we all sin. We all know what it. it's in Romans. It says everybody sins. And sometimes we forget that we can have that taken away. When we have bad things happen, that's when we come back and pray. I don't think very many of us would pray that Barbara made it home safe and sound, not to be putting anybody down if she wasn't in the middle of a category of working. So let's just not forget our gift here. Don't wait for something bad to happen just to be grateful we have a Savior. And that's my thought for this morning. If you are a baptized believer, Christian Valley has open communion. We want you to participate with us. If you would, would men come forward. If you'll bow with me, we're going to pray. Lord, thank you for this day, and thank you for the good times and the bad things and, and all the things that you do to make us who we are. We just need to learn to appreciate you and, and understand that your will is your will and your power is your power, and everything you do is good for us. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>
Amen. <clears throat> Appreciate our guys for uh, serving this morning, everybody who serves to make this uh, possible to be here and to, uh, to make this church service happen, for sure. Uh, we'll say thank you again. Um, you're a good church family. We love you guys. And, uh, and um, you know, I was, just, I was just back here thinking um, I, uh, what I'd like to do is, um, is go out this afternoon and, and uh, take a picture of all that stuff and put it on, uh, on social media and, and really brag how good you guys are. But then there's a, there's a little fine line in there because I have way too many friends in ministry who don't get recognized at all this month, and it always makes me feel like that would make them feel worse, and so I don't know. Uh, but I do want you to know how much I appreciate you all, for sure. Uh, we talked about our announcements a little earlier. There's one more I do want to talk about. It's, um, we've been talking the last few weeks about our uh, upcoming marriage retreat, and um, and uh, told you a little bit about that. We're going to be, uh, we, it, it's a two-night retreat down uh, near Little Rock, Mall Mail, in that area. And um, so two nights lodging, all the meals, materials, everything is there. And it is uh, $250 per couple. We do have some sponsorship money on that offered if, uh, if you need that. But what we need to know now is, are you going to attend or not? We've heard from a lot of people that said they are interested, and they might. Had a couple of uh, that said they are, and uh, and so uh, talk to to me or or Keith or Beth if if you're ready to commit to that because we need to know here this week uh, who's going to be going. That's uh, November first and second, and actually the third um, in uh, the Vine Center, and in, in like I said near Little Rock. Uh, this is going to be a, a, a weekend not to, uh, not to tell everybody, hey, um, our marriage is in trouble and falling apart. It is, uh, it's just to strengthen and upbuild and to, to refocus on, uh, on a, a Christian marriage. And so if you're interested in that, talk to us. If you want to commit to that, talk to us. But we have to know soon what we're going to be doing there. So a lot of stuff going on. Um, it's just a busy time of year, and it's going to be busy for a while now. Um, we're getting ready to start planning a uh, Christmas program for the kids, so you'll be hearing about that, as well as, um, like I said, our fall festival in uh, November. We'll be talking about our harvest offering, as well as our, um, our uh, Thanksgiving area Thanksgiving service, and giving you some details on all those things. So, uh, just hang on and Read your bulletin and ask us if you have any questions. Our kids can head on back now to Children's Church. Got a lot of uh, kids heading back there. We got some uh, folks heading back to teach, and we appreciate them very much. Uh, if you would like to make that your ministry, we uh, be sure and talk to us. We want to uh, get you hooked up there to help with our kids. Kids are learning this, uh, this month um, about parables. And so um, these are some stories Jesus told to prove a, a, a point, and, um, and they're going to be learning some of those stories. So be sure today when your kids head home, you head out to a home or a restaurant, just be sure and ask them what they learned back there. And um, it, it's always a little it's fun, and it's colorful to, to listen to them and see what they learn for sure. If you have your bulletin and want to turn ahead to where I'm going to be reading today, there should be an outline on the front. Um, yes, there is an outline on the front there, so uh, you can turn ahead so you'll uh, be able to read on your phone, your tablet. Uh, we love to hear those pages turning from the Bible, and if you don't want to do any of that, we'll just put the words here up on the screen for you. Halloween has uh, surely changed a lot over the years and over my lifetime, for sure. Um, just to be honest, I'll tell you all, and I know some of you are not going to believe this, but I never really liked Halloween. I like candy, okay? And uh, one of the means that I had to uh, get a, a, a grocery, a paper grocery bag full of candy was to go out to, to dress up in some crude outfit. We didn't have uh, this, uh, the, the costumes, store-bought costumes. I never got one of those. Didn't get a mask we wore. We took an old pillowcase and, and, uh, and cut holes in it for eyes and, and dressed up and, and went out and knocked on some doors in the neighborhood and got some candy, and, and we'd get a good haul and take those home. My grandmother was famous 
over in the small town where she lived, she would bake on Halloween day, she would bake up about a hundred. I mean, I remember going over there and there was just cookie sheets everywhere of popcorn balls, homemade popcorn balls, and kids would line up at the door. My grandmother would make them take their mask off because kids would go and change masks so they could come back and get another popcorn ball. Yeah. And, um, and so Halloween was fun in those ways, but I never really liked scary things, okay? And, um, and, and that's what Halloween kind of stands for. I, I've, I've never liked haunted houses. Don't want anything to do with haunted houses. Been in one, I think I can remember my whole life, and uh, couldn't get out of there quick enough. Uh, scary movies, horror movies, no way. I am not subjecting myself to have to sit here at a movie and, and put my hands over my eyes for, for a couple of hours not doing it. And if you love that stuff, I'll pray for you. Um, but, uh, but, you know, I'm not doing that because I don't like scary. Halloween has changed. It went from fun and non-threatening to, to, to somewhere today where I don't understand what it is at all. We don't trust our neighbors enough to allow our children to go knock on their doors. We, don't, uh, we, we provide a safe haven for trick-or-treat here even at our church. We, um, there's this darkness, I believe, that surrounds Halloween now, and it's uh, really been ramped up. In fact, I went into Home Depot a few days ago, uh, have you guys been in there, that seasonal area in Home Depot? And uh, if you're watching online, I know you can't see this, but this is uh, just uh, from our local Home Depot, and there's just not a lot of fun and non-threatening in this picture. I mean, uh, I can't uh, show it to you, but, uh, but in the middle here on the bottom, there's this like, little creature, what, holding a knife, huh? Can you see that? And then this guy over here has some big stick. And, the, and then that one there, it, it was called a zombie. I'm just going to tell you, I'm not sure I believe in zombies, but I don't want to be around one, all right? And, uh, and so I stood there for just a second looking at that, thinking this kind of creeps me out a little bit. And I thought spooky and scary and fun has been replaced with gory and bloody and downright creepy. And so what I decided to do was take this idea of, of evil that, that we sort of almost celebrate this month and let it inspire me on, uh, in a sermon series on evil. Okay? When Jesus told his disciples he would teach them how to pray, he said... Uh, he, he addressed his Father in heaven, and he, he said, uh, uh, ask for daily provisions. He acknowledged temptation is real. And then there's this line in there that we sometimes say really quick at the end, or we may actually overlook it altogether. He said, deliver us from evil, or deliver us from the evil one, maybe your Bible says. Do we pray that? That... Do we pray, Father, I know there's a lot of evil out here. Would you deliver me from the evil one? Evil is all around us. It's been around us from the, uh, from the beginning of time. The, the evil one disguised himself as a serpent in the Garden of Eden and, and tempted the man and the woman there to, to just open the door to the a world of sin. Okay, Evil caused Cain to be jealous of which led to murder. Evil caused God to flood the world, to, to start over because of the evil. He wiped out the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah because of evil, okay? And you don't have to look very far today to find evil all around you. There is an ongoing war between good and evil. Now, there's wars all around us. The world's full of wars. Watch the news. I looked online this, uh, this week. at uh, I was shocked at how many, maybe not wars, but it called them conflicts going on in the world these days. If you watch the news and you see what's going on, you're going to hear a lot about Ukraine and Iraq and Israel and Lebanon and just all these countries in the world. But there's a lot of things going on that you've probably never even heard of. That's not the only kind of war. We've been hearing for... Um, over 20 years now about the war on terror. We've been hearing for, for 
most of my adult lifetime about the war on drugs. And we hear about this spiritual war that's going on in our hearts and our heads. The spiritual war is not like the others, okay? Let's see what Paul says about it in Ephesians chapter 6, starting in verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the power of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Okay, so um, we, we've heard this. The, uh, if, if you've been in church very much, you may have heard of the armor of God. If you haven't been in church, we're glad you're here. Okay, this is, this is how we learn. All right? And, 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 and so Paul says we're gonna put, he's going to tell us in a little bit to put on the armor of God to withstand the devil. But did you notice here, and I think sometimes we skip over this, he said he called it the devil's scheme. The devil schemes. The schemes, that, that kind of has this underlying, kind of this eh, uh, not immoral kind of thing, like the devil's cheating a little bit. He's, he's kind of dressing up. He's got schemes. And then he, sa- and he tells us, hey, this is a war, but it's not a flesh and blood war. It's a different, it, it's a war we don't see. We've heard about this armor of God. We're supposed to gear up so that we're protected. And we do a lot of things where we gear up. I was watching a football game, not yesterday, but the week before. I was watching a football game, and, um, and these players are all geared up, right? They got on their, their cleats, and they've got on um, uh, pads in their pants, and they've got you know, around their, their knees and their hips and these sort of things. They've got on shoulder pads. I mean, they get geared up, and they wear helmets. And so one of the players was out there, and he was running the football, and, and it was a penalty, but uh, a guy grabbed him by the, the, ma- the face mask, the bars there, and ripped his helmet off, okay? And so when that happens, the play automatically stops, but nobody heard the whistle, and this guy was running with the football and no helmet. And do you think his te- the, the other team, the the I guess you would say, maybe the enemy, let's say. <laughs> Do you think they took it easy on him because he had on no helmet? No. I'm telling you what, man. They, he was running, and the referees were all blowing their whistle and doing these things, but he was running, and they were chasing. There were like three of them chasing him, and finally one of them jumped on his back and drove him into the ground, and the other two piled on. And he got up. And he did this. Uh, he showed them who was boss, right? But I'm going to tell you, that worked for one play. If he tried to play the whole game like that, it wouldn't be long before he'd be in in there uh, seeing stars. He'd have cuts and bruises. He'd have a concussion because you couldn't play the game of football. If everybody was wearing a helmet and you weren't, you'd get hurt really bad. There's some things in life we wouldn't do unless we're protected. This spiritual war is not supposed to be any different. Paul says that, that this is not like the other wars that we've heard of. This is a different kind of war. Not a flesh and blood war. It's an enemy. It's a battle against this enemy that we don't see. And that might make it even more difficult sometimes. Okay? If, if, if the devil just walked down this aisle right now, I'd get ready. Okay? I'd, I'd, get, I'd, get, my, I'd get a solid base here. I'd put my, my hands right here. I'm, you know, I might not last long, but I would give it a shot. We can't see the devil. He, and, and the devil's full of schemes. It's, a, it's, it's against this uh, enemy that masquerades and manipulates. And that makes it very difficult. One thing that is the same, maybe you've watched a movie, you've read books about wars, and, and you know that uh, after, after especially a movie, you know, and these hand-to-hand wars, there's always this one guy, and he's been through all the battle, and he walks across the battlefield slowly afterward. He's the victor, and there's casualties everywhere, right? He's having to step over them, step across them. He looks at them. 
There's casualties. There's fatalities everywhere. And that is one thing that is the same in this spiritual war that, is, uh, that, that we can relate to is the devil is leaving a wake of casualties behind him. It's time for us to pick a side, folks. You've got to decide if this is a war, you've got to be on one side or another. You can't stand in the middle. If that's the truth, ne neither side is going to like you. You've got to pick a side. When it comes to the welfare of our kids and our grandkids, it's time for us to pick a side. When it comes to the, to the direction of our country, it's time for us to pick a side. When it comes to the commitment that we need to follow good, not evil, it's time for us to pick a side. Our spiritual enemy is hard to recognize. Paul says this battle is, is, uh, is against this enemy that we don't fight hand to hand, this invisible enemy. Uh, we don't draw a sword, okay? We don't, that's not the, the kind of battle where we're not using uh, weapons, we're not using tanks, we're not using radars, we're not using planes. And, and it's hard for us to even spot our enemy in this thing. The one that we need delivered from wears costumes. It's not trick-or-treat costumes, but he pretends to be somebody he's not. A while back, I got a text message, didn't recognize the number, and I realized immediately it was a wrong number. Um, one, <laughs> I, I, I didn't return it immediately I was kind of busy but this message was wondering if I wanted to meet that evening it, the, it came from New Jersey I, but wanted to know if I wanted to meet in the city okay for dinner that night and um, and so finally I I was gonna I, I got another text message I realized it's the same number same person wanting I thought well I may as well return this somebody's got a wrong number here let them know. And so I returned it. So I think you have the wrong number. And, um, and, and said my name's not Angie because it was too, hey Angie, you know. And so I got a reply to that. Said, oh, so sorry. Uh, thanks for letting me know. My name is Heather. What can I call you? She don't know me. And I thought about that a little bit. I replied, happily married. You can call me happily married. And I thought that was about the best answer I could come up with. I uh, never heard any more, okay? I'm pretty sure there was some kind of scam going on there, okay? I'm just saying. We live in a world full of scams. Your debit card gets compromised. You get things in the mail, you get emails. I'm still uh, waiting on all that money from Nigeria. The queen over there is supposed to be sending me money for years now. Haven't gotten any. Text message scams, all kinds of scams. I'm getting things from my bank saying don't click on links. I don't know now what I'm supposed to do, what I'm not supposed to do. Listen, folks, there's been a scammer in our midst since the world began. There are scams and there are schemes all around us. The evil one doesn't hold a t-shirt or doesn't wear a t-shirt that says uh, the devil, doesn't hold up a sign that says uh, follow me to hell, but that's exactly what he has in mind. He doesn't stand out here and yell to you, I'm going to kill and steal and destroy, but that's his motive. When verse 11 here says, put on the, the full armor of God and stand against the schemes of the devil, we have to, first thing we have to do is identify and recognize the devil. The devil's a deceiver, okay? And that, that's kind of one of the very first things we have to understand. The devil will tell you something that's not exactly the truth, but he paints it to be the truth. Revelation 20, 10 says, and the devil... Who, what? Deceived them. He has this big group of followers. Why? Because he lied to them. He made something look like the truth when it was not the truth. The devil is also a distractor. 
James chapter 1, verses 13 through 15 says, When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But this, this part right here is where I, I really want you to focus. It says, but each person is tempted when they what? Are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed, okay? And so he says, um, the devil's out here. You think he's trying to tempt you, but actually you're tempting yourself. You are distracting yourself. We make it too easy. I'm just going to tell you, we feel like the devil's trying to kick in the door to our homes. We're just opening the door to our homes to him. And we have to be really careful not to do that with our churches as well. With our schedules, our commitments, our work, our wants, our passions, our entertainment, our needs. We have this long laundry list, of, of, of a bucket list of other things that distract us from what is good and right. And in and of themselves they may be good and right, but too much of anything or too much of something that takes your eye off Jesus Christ is a distraction. And I don't care how you paint it up, how good you think it is, how, how, uh, how much you think that uh, your, your, your family is going to benefit from it. I'm just going to tell you straight up, the devil takes good things and, we, and, and allows us to over abuse them to the point where we, they distract us. There's a quote, I don't know who made this up, don't have any idea. It says, if the devil can't make you bad... He'll make you busy. The world's full of a lot of good people who are too busy to follow Jesus. And I'm afraid that hell's going to be full of a lot of good people who were too busy to follow Jesus. The devil's also a des uh, desensitizer. A desensitizer. This one's a little different. This one's dangerous, though. Like if you go to the dentist, you ever been to the dentist and you get, uh, you know, you get two or three shots in your mouth and your, your mouth feels, it feels like a balloon, okay? So you're walking around out here and you can't talk, like, and your people are like, what? What'd you say? You know, and when your mouth feels like that, I'm just going to give you some advice. Like give it a couple hours before you go get a, cup, a bag of Doritos or something. All right, because what's going to happen is you're not going to realize your tongue is in the way or your lips in the way, and you're going to be over there munching on those Doritos, and they're going to taste good, and you're not going to realize that you were desensitized to the point you didn't understand that you were harming yourself. When we're desensitized, we don't care if we see hurt. When we're desensitized, we don't care if we see poverty when we're desensitized we don't care if we see racism when we're desensitized we don't care if we see sinners who are in danger of eternal hell we care about us when we're desensitized the things of god the good things of god become really trivial the beauty of life is just reduced to a clump of sails the beauty of love is replaced by lust. The beauty of marriage is just a battleground for sexual rights. The beauty of how God created us, male and female, is complicated by what we've been told are civil rights. Now get this straight, and I'm going to say this once, I'm going to say it plain, okay? These things and these people are not our enemy, they're a victim of our enemy. That makes sense? Okay? But we're desensitized. And it's getting worse all the time. We're like this frog that's in a pot of hot water. We didn't realize that the heat was turned up so slowly that it went from cold to boiling and we never noticed. The Word of God hasn't changed. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20 says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. Who put darkness for light and light for darkness? Who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter? This fight is not against flesh and blood. And that makes it a whole lot more uh, difficult for us. The spiritual forces we fight, again, uh, uh, fight against, I'm just going to tell you, the spiritual forces we fight against hate your soul. I, 
I mean, I'm just going to tell you. It's not like we're all, oh, we're all just friends out here hanging out. We're, we're on a different team. That's not true. The spiritual forces we fight against hate your soul. And they want you to be destroyed. And they want your life to be miserable. And they dress up evil to make it look good. We're called to be strong and mighty. Let's read on, verse 13. Therefore put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Paul says, stay in firm. Okay, we're going to be geared up, but I think this is really important for us to, to realize that we've got to stand firm, get a good foundation, kind of dig in, okay? If you're in a tug of war and you're, uh, you're pulling on a rope, you, you, the first thing people do, right, they dig in. All right? You watch a baseball player. He comes up, wants to hit a home run, wants to hit one over the fence. What's the first thing they do? They take their foot and they dig a little hole there so they've got a really strong foundation. We need to stand firm. That's a common theme throughout the Bible. But honestly, we're never going to be able to stand firm without this protection. He talks about the helmet that reminds us of what Jesus did, the breastplate that protects our heart right here, the, the belt that is truth, the shoes that are the gospel of peace, the we, uh, our weapon, uh, like a sword, is the word of God. But there's one more thing. Verse 18, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I may fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should he says I, I, let's just all pray about this we need to be prayers we need to pray from the Lord uh, I pray that the Lord Jesus prayed Lord deliver me from the evil one if Jesus prayed that if Jesus knew he needed the Lord's help don't you think maybe we should take a hint don't be afraid to, to, to pick a side. Don't be afraid to stand your ground. I think sometimes we're afraid to identify because it exposes us as, as, as a follower or as a believer. You may worry. I, you know, I, I don't want to, if I tell everybody how I feel, I may offend somebody. It's time to offend some people, maybe. I don't know. I told you guys earlier, I told you when we let off this sermon here, that I was a little bit appalled by what I saw in Home Depot. And I would not doubt but what somebody in this crowd right here, sitting in these pews, have one of those inflatables in your yard, okay? And I'm good with that. Seriously. We need to get rid of this idea that if we disagree about something, that we hate each other. We can, we can see things differently and love each other, all right? That's the truth. We're not living in this world. Sometimes I think we're told, you, if you like this, then, then you hate this people. And if you like this thing, then, then, then you totally agree with everything that they belong to. That's not true. That's a lie. That's the devil talking to you and scheming and deception and all these things we just talked about. When we pray, deliver us from evil... We may just uh, immediately think the, the things that hamper our happiness and distract us from a, a full life and, and worry us and harm us are just going to all magically go away. I wish I could say it was, but probably not. I think maybe when we pray deliver us from evil, it just means that we're going to have the strength and the wisdom and the willpower to recognize and avoid the situations where mo we are most vulnerable. And so what's our takeaway today? The 
us ask ourselves, are you ready to take a stand? And I tell you what, how can we read? Look at that, what's up there. How can we read that without standing? Stand with me. Are you ready today to take a stand? It's time to stand up for Jesus. It's time to stand up against the evil one. It's time to stand up against his schemes. It's time to stand firm until the end. It's time for us to stand up for what we believe. If we want to turn this country around, we're going to stand up. If we want to turn this this community around, we're going to stand up. If we want to turn this church around and our homes around, we're going to stand up. And we're going to stand firm. And we're going to recognize what's going on around us. If you want to make a decision today, I'm going to stand right over here, and we're going to ask you to come. We'll pray, we'll talk, whatever you got on your mind. Let's do it today. Mm-hmm.